Hey guys, happy Monday to you. I just got out of the completion of the Landmark Forum. I don't know how many of you have heard of Landmark before, but what a amazing experience. Hey Varun, hey Sugar Plum Festival. I have a question for you guys. Um, you know, today's Monday and, and I am here on the rooftop in West Hollywood just sitting enjoying the hot tub. I'm gonna do some laps in the pool today before I start work and I'm just curious, you know, what, what do you do to find balance in your life? You know, what really matters to you uh, in your life, your priorities, and how do you find balance in that? You know, there's, we live in a day and age that's so freaking busy, right? Everyone's just so busy, busy, busy. And one of the new things that's come into my life that I feel so grateful for is this new friendship and partnership where I'm experiencing someone that actually, I feel like they're listening to me. I'm listening to this person. Um, able to be present most importantly and experience a really supportive like partnership and it's not something I'm used to experiencing a lot because I'm realizing through landmark what they one of the things they teach you is how much we're bringing our past and we're projecting it into our future you know a lot of you that know me pretty well know I grew up with a really hey hey Evelyn uh, many of you know, I grew up in, um, my, my story and who I was being for so long was this broken five-year-old that was abused severely in many different ways. You know, we all experience some sort of abuse in our, in, in our lives and, or trauma or something, you know, that, that creates mindsets that, and beliefs about ourselves. And then because we believe that, we live that. And then we do that for so many years, we don't even realize we're doing it and it's sabotaging ourselves. So like for me, one of the things when I was really, really, really young, um, one of my first memories was, uh, it was before I could even talk. I was on the floor crawling, I was a baby. And I remember looking up and seeing my father, he was a raging alcoholic and he was so, so angry and his eyes were glazed over and he was beating my mom up and here I was this baby on the floor and unable to process the magnitude of what was happening in my world and I remember there's times in our lives where we have these significant moments where they shape who we are and what that did for me was it shaped who I was. I felt powerless in that moment. I felt like who did I need, the person that I needed to be in the, um, was not my mother. So, you know, I, I always, from that point forward, didn't trust men. Not only did I not trust them, I was afraid of them. And the last person I was gonna be in this world was what I perceived as a weak woman. So that made me into such an independent person. And that's just one example of something that happened in my life that has significantly shaped who I am. But you know what that led to? Oh my gosh, over time, this being so independent led to me being so single and so isolated from everyone because I'm like, if I don't need people, then, you know, then I'll just do it myself or be on my own. And I stop asking for help for people in my life. I stop nurturing relationships that matter to me in my life. Something that we learned in Landmark is that our life our lives are the people that are in it. It's the relationships. I cut everyone out. I freaking lived out of my car for almost two years, on and off. And like, I can, I was, I was suicidal most of my life. And the reason why is because no one was in it, and it was my fault. I was the one that was blocking everyone out of it. And I'm just so grateful to experience a workshop experience like this, where I can get clear on how I've been living that has been making me fucking miserable. You know the cool thing about it? It's all in the past. It's all in the past. And what that means is so long as I can be with that, with what had happened, 
I can let it go because I've done so much healing around it but I also am able to with my mind use the power of my mind to be able to get to a place of presence here right now so that gives me so much power because that means I can create a future not from the past being projected in the future I can create a future from a brand new slate and be whoever I want to be from this place forward you know Marianne Williamson my favorite quote our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate our deepest fear is we're powerful beyond measure it's our light not our darkness that most frightens us it is our light not our darkness that most frightens us when we know that we're powerful and we have all these the world literally like we we have power to be able to create new possibilities in our reality in our life in our future I can be really scary I get it and that's kind of where I'm at right now is who would I be without all these stories without the past I don't know who I would be and you know what that's a great place to be because in that space of not knowing is a space of nothingness and that space of nothingness you can't create when there's already shit in your space you can create from a blank canvas a blank slate and I'm sharing this with you because I'm having these epiphanies and and one of the things we learn too is sharing love is sharing so just like in our lives the people in our the people, the people in the relationships are what makes our up our lives. It's also sharing with people. That is love. They get to, like, we bring them into our lives and we share about ourselves. And I was not doing this. I was, I was like, oh, people don't care. People are too busy. I don't matter. Whatever. I'll just, I'll just do stuff on my own. I'll just live life on my own. And it just caused me so much misery. And the thing is, is that I know just like me there's so many people that are struggling they're suffering inside not getting these needs met of feeling authentic and vulnerable and connected with people in our lives it's surface level conversation and it's 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 just it's not getting a lot of our deep needs met and really where it's at is being vulnerable and one of the things that i am creating a new possibility for myself moving forward in my future is to be a woman of integrity and so I really had to think of, in this, this weekend in Landmark, we talked about the word integrity and what it means and, and then, you know, what, what it means to me. And when I really created space around integrity, I could see in my life how I was being out of integrity. And I pride myself on being um, a woman of integrity, but I didn't use that language before. And now that I am, the power of my words and me being mindful and present to the words that I'm that I'm choosing to speak into my reality to create my future, it is a big deal because when I'm out of integrity, my life goes to shit. And it did. That you know, living out of my car, I was freaking broke. And the thing is, is when people look at me, I mean not right now, I'm at the pool, I'm not, you know, but like when I, when they or maybe now, I don't know, when they look at me or when they make assumptions about me, people have told me they're like I never would have known you were broke. I never would have known you were suffering inside so much. I never would have known that you were struggling. Of course not, because all my life I was taught to put on a mask, like we all do. I was taught to put on a big smile that everything is a-okay in my life. How are you doing? Let's put the focus on you, because then I don't have to work on me, right? That is so easy to do, especially when we step out of our door and we're in we're around so many people we just put on these masks it's not the world I want to live in or create or be part of and that's why I'm here even right now just being real you know the, the but not to say no one's real I think we're all we're all living and believing that we are being real that's what's so fascinating about going to a transformational workshop and doing transformational work is we know what we know in life right you know what you know in life knowledge is not power it's not we know what we don't know so like okay so let's go back to you know what you know you know what your name is you know where you live you know who your mom is you know who your dad is right you know those basic things we don't we know what we don't know so like I know that I 
I needed, I knew, I knew I was having financial problems. So I was doing everything I could to turn that around. Okay, that's an example of um, working on what I know that I don't know and that I was trying to fix and change. But you know what's really the driving force of our life and the future that we're creating? Is the universe, the space of not knowing what we don't know. It's our blind spots. It's the sabotaging habits, thoughts, and behaviors that we're doing on a regular basis that is contributing to create a future that is sabotaging. So like, again, for example, I did not realize by being so independent and proving, trying, and underlining, this comes from my childhood again, this need for approval and proving to people um, because I had such suppressed anger and resentment for people being too bu- feeling like people were too busy in my life and they couldn't be present to me and that made me feel like I didn't matter and so that in and it itself made me just feel like be so independent and then cut people out and not not keep them in my life and so it caused me such misery, so much misery, like I said. It, I, I had a suicidal mindset m- majority of my life. And it, you know, it, it's tormenting. And I, I, I know there's people out there who, who have experienced what I've experienced. You're, you have a suicidal mindset. You don't fucking want to live. But you aren't someone who can kill yourself. It's a really difficult way to live. You don't want to live and you can't kill yourself. So you don't want to live and every day you wake up and you're like, fuck, I'm still alive and I got to do this shit. I don't want to be here. What do you do? You know, and, and this isn't a day, a, 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 a one day thing. This was, this was at least, this was started in my 20s. So for 20 years, I lived in this world of not wanting to live but not being able to take my life. And I did attempt, um, there was a time that I did attempt to and I got really, really close. Um, I remember it was, uh, I believe it was about eight years ago, it was August 10th, June, July, August. So yeah, and I remember I was, um, I had to drink a lot because I I had to get myself out of normal state of consciousness. I remember I was in Portland, Oregon, and I was driving on Skyline Road. It's, it's a road like on, on the top of the, one of the top of the beautiful West Hills, and it's my ba- best friend back road. I used to just drive that road when I was really upset. I'd just go on a drive, and I'd just listen to music and chill and stuff, but this particular night, I, I just, I drank a lot purposely, and I, it's a very curvy road, and I just, I, was, I, I made a decision. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna drive the fuck off this road. I just, I, I was so miserable, and so I, I ended up, um, I, I, you know, just kept driving the curves and I'm like, is it going to be this one? Is it going to be this one? And like life like started to really slow down, you know, get to the next curve. And finally I was like, this is it. This is going to be the one. I remember that moment so clearly. And I remember in that moment, I was gonna do it. I was gonna just push my foot on the accelerator and go for it. Cause I was in so much pain and I was so isolated and alone. And in that moment, my cat, I had a black cat named Lulu. I named her, Lulu was a, um, a nickname for I Love Lucy, you know? And I was living in my condo at the time in Hillsboro and in that moment I was going to drive off this cliff or this the mountain um, she popped in my head and I was so afraid that no one would be able to identify me and be able to feed her or take care of her and in that moment the presence of my cat's love literally saved my life That's how powerful people, animals, that's how, that's how powerful we are. We could literally, we save each other's lives. So, um, so I ended up, um, 
driving back home that night and um, and shortly after started seeing a, a therapist and I had seen plenty of therapists in my 20s I was in my mid 30s I think I was 33 30 yeah 33 when this happened and in the midst of this darkness this is where the light came and I met my therapist and um, she had a background of Buddha she wasn't a Buddhist but she had studied Buddhism and her her business was called healing into wholeness and she literally is my guardian angel she was the right fit the perfect therapist to be able to help me um, heal a lot of not heal but also look at for the first time in a loving way um, my childhood and she was the one that went beyond normal therapy which is what I experienced where you just talk and they listen and you can only get so deep and so far with that but she started teaching me like uh, meditation and energy healing and all these other different ways to be able to be with the extremely intense emotions and thoughts that were arising so um, I call her my guardian angel and, and that's where literally my life started shifting in a different way where I started this path of loving myself because getting to a point of suicide I remember just looking in the mirror and I hated myself I hated myself so much and it's I just have so much compassion when I even hear myself say that because I just feel for anyone out there that just feels self-hatred or you know people in your lives that you can you you just know you can tell by the way they treat themselves the way they live their lives the way they speak that they they, they don't love themselves and and so this started the path of me being what I call the goddess of self-love you know again I was like I don't need people i will just so it put me on this path of self-love but quite honestly you know I've been single for a long time a really really long time and and that's that's not the story I'm going to be creating. I'm looking to create a new possibility. I, 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 I want to experience being married and life partnership with someone. And I know that the path to be able to move forward in that direction in a healthy way, um, attract a really healthy relationship, is to be real. It's not to put on my mask. So many people, like, you know, I think, like, when you date and stuff, it's almost like interviewing. Like, you, you just show your best self. And I've always been one to really believe that friendship is so important. Um, because you know if I'm gonna be with someone for the rest of my life I want to I want a partnership I want to know that someone is not only gonna be there for me in the amazing you know amazing times but also during the most challenging times too and that we can get through it together but you know it's it's a big reason one of my friends a long time ago was like you're a you're not a dater you're a mater not a dater is like yeah I don't I'm not someone who dates a lot of people because I'm not about quantity I'm about quality in my relationships I value deep deep connection I value being authentic and vulnerable even on social media those are those are the the souls that I when I come on social media there's it's like coming onto the matrix right like Facebook or Instagram it's like being on the matrix where you're just like <coughs> There's so many energies, there's so many personalities, there's so many people with so many emotions out there. So like we can be extremely susceptible to all these different energies and not even realize it. You know, you can get on Instagram feeling good and then you get off of it and you're in a pissed off mood. Like why did that happen? Okay, well, cause I fed my mind negativity. So it's really refreshing to be able to um, witness vulnerability on social media that's why I like to share it when I see it and I like to you know just really encourage it and I, I engage with it and respond to it because that's the world I want to create that's the world I want to be part of that's the future that I want to contri contribute to moving forward because that's the space where love and connection happens is when we're actually real and we take take our masks off I've had this unique career you know of um, of being in people's homes so ever since I was 19 I've been in people's homes and their workspaces their offices and in, in different capacities and um, and it's 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 interesting because you know I've worked with people especially as a professional organizer I've worked with people who are deep in their shame I've worked with them behind closed doors I've seen I've seen that and it, it's it's I've been privileged to be able to have that. I've been blessed to be able to have that experience because I've, I've seen the realness of people, which is why I'm so compassionate for myself and for the humans that I'm so blessed to meet and interact with in my life. Um, but you know, it's weird because I'm living in freaking West Hollywood now, which is uh, the extreme version of consumerism and wearing false masks 
loss and loss of identity. And so it's so fascinating that I'm here because it's totally the contrast of um, of the world that that makes me feel safe and comfortable. And so being in the contrast of this, it's kind of like you know I'm the light in my in my in the in the environment of darkness. And so it's forcing me to realize more and more my light because I'm in this experience and. Um, it's just fascinating where our lives take us um, to bring us what we most need to help us really realize the truth of who we are and the reason why I created this video today most importantly is because now I realize that love is sharing and I'm here to show up imperfectly, but you know what? Honestly, as honest and transparent, vulnerable, authentic, and to continue to create this new possibility in my life, this new becomingness of being a woman of integrity. And so what that means is I've got a lot of sh relationship shit to clean up. I've, I've, got a, I've got some amends to do. It takes a lot of humility because a lot of me is like, they should be apologizing to me. But no, no, no. All that stuff, hold tight. Whoa, we got three helicopters up here. Hollywood is so entertaining living here. I love it. All right. I completely forgot what I was saying. Oh, women of integrity here. So I have realized that what we, or remembered, what we think about other people has nothing to do with them. That is all in our head. You can get so angry at someone. That is, that is, that's, that's my anger when I get mad at someone. No one triggered me. That is, that's me being angry because something outside of myself I'm feeling, I'm feeling angry. We forget that. We forget that. We're, we project so much and want to blame other people for our unhappiness and our misery and whatever's going on. But the real, real truth of this is that, no, it's all happening in our minds. We're the ones that are, that are creating, creating these experiences. We're the ones that are experiencing in our bodies these emotions, these feelings. So when I say I need to clean up my relationships, it's because I'm realizing I've been holding on to resentment with certain people in my life. I've been ang holding on to anger people in my life. There are memories from my childhood that I'm, st I'm living out in my life. I've been continuing to live it to try to prove that it's exactly not who I am. For example, let me give you an example. So like, my mom called me Lazy Susan at times when I when I when we were growing up. I taught, I had a, a I did a little presentation on this one time, um, and and so I was pissed because I was pissed at her for so many years, and in order to show her that I wasn't lazy, I became the person who was radically productive. That's why I'm a phenomenal organizer is because I was proving to my mother that I wasn't lazy. In fact, you know, I, I have this business, Organize Zen, where I, I laugh now because the, the, the full circle of this is I'm like, I'm not lazy. I'm lazy Suzanne. And Zen is about having peace and balance and harmony and flow in my life. So um, so just kind of, um, that was my turnaround for that for years and years. Like at least like almost 40 years of 40 35 years of my life living a life that wasn't even a life that I was mindfully living because I was too busy trying to prove on a subconscious level that I was that I wasn't lazy and the fact is is there were many aspects of the way I was living that I really was being lazy so that's the irony of it this is why it's like mind-blowing to me of like how the very thing the very ways like how I was living to not be lazy and here there were so many aspects of my life that was causing me um, failures in my life because I, I was proving that I wasn't lazy. Um, that's why I, I had so I had great success in my early 20s 
um, because I was proving to my mom I'm responsible. I'm not lazy. I'm, you know, are you proud of me now? Do I have your approval? You know, but again, that was all outside of me. I made all that shit up. I made it all up. I made it up in my head. It's what we do. So, so those, that's an example of like, I got to clean that up. You know, that's a relationship. It's, it's one of my, you know, our mothers are one of our strongest relationships. I've been estranged from my mom for eight years and I've been estranged from my mother for eight years. We're both living on this earth together and we're not talking. And I pretended that that was okay. I pretended that she didn't matter to me anymore, that I, I, I actually made peace, or I told myself that I made peace, that I was never ever gonna talk to her again in my life and that I was gonna be okay with that. And, and it's not okay. It's not okay because all of me has been searching for that bond for, for in my life and you know, Again, these are just examples of just, it's so fascinating how we live and how we, we create these lives that are causing us so much misery, but we're the ones that have the power to shift that and change that. So those are a lot of my thoughts for today, and I hope that in some way um, it, it's, it, it makes you feel better to know you're not alone. It makes you feel better if there's anything that you, you relate to and, and what I've said that that we literally can create a, 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 a future of infinite possibilities. We have the ability to create a future and not create, not continue creating, recreating the past in new ways. Um, but it's, it's definitely a, a different way to think. I feel like I'm someone, I feel like right, right there. I just said it. I'm someone who, who, I believe is live from my heart first and I used to be so heady especially when I was in my 20s and I worked for corporate and had a lot of success and stuff I I on the outside everything looked really good but on the inside I was miserable and I was suffering and I was not living from my heart and so when I you know started working with my therapist that's where I started becoming someone who was living from my heart that's why I'm I I feel like I'm really intuitive and I can connect with people on such deep levels. Um, and I'm extremely compassionate and, and, and empathic. And that's, that's all, those are some of the gifts from my heart and why I deeply love souls. That, and I feel so blessed with the souls that I, I meet every single day and, and the souls in my life. And, and, and so now I'm having to relearn how to get back into my head in different ways, be able to, um, be empowered because I've had so much mental clutter like does anyone ever just experience just feeling so overwhelmed and confused and you just don't have clarity it's all foggy inside and um, especially if you are living in survival mode in your life it's terrifying it's a terrifying space to be because you're you're wanting solutions and you're willing to do anything that it'll take to change your circumstances but your head is just can't you can't think you can't move you can't do anything and so that's how I relate to homeless people um, <clears throat> you know you just on the outside it looks simple like just go get a job you know just go go do something go take an action but when your head is so cluttered it is debilitating so debilitating and um, that's why meditation is so important to me and that's why being at Landmark um, and, and I'm going to be going to the advanced training next week and, um, and continuing this process. And I I'm, I'm just feel so grateful that this is in my life because <clears throat> I'm ready for it. And, um, and I'm excited about creating new possibilities for my future, but not recreating from the past. And um, it's a practice. You know, this is life. It's, it's not meant to be perfect. It's a journey. It's a practice. And it's not me trying to get somewhere. That's the part that my ego wants to keep going off to. It's like trying to get somewhere. Like when, when I get married, I'll be happy. When I'm married, I'll be happy. When I, you know, when I have a successful career in certain ways, I'll be happy. Like when, when I have this, I'll be happy. Like no, right now is the place to be happy. This is the place that creates more happiness. Right here, right now. Being present. What does presence even mean? Who are we? If we aren't our stories, who are we? 
stuff is just fascinating to me. So, all right, you guys. Well, I hope you have a wonderful Monday, and thanks for joining, uh, whether you're here right now or if you're joining at a later time. I, uh, I'm so grateful that you joined me today, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Mm.